The options for good beginner fixture bikes in Canada can be a lot more limited than here in the US. And even then, a lot of the bikes are exactly the same and are just clones of each other with different decals. But for 450 Canadian dollars or 340 US dollars, the Cabaneros line looks like it actually brings something at least a little bit different to the table. So let's find out if the Cabaneros Barranquilla is worth your hard earned money. What's up, I'm Zach Allard, life is short, but don't make it shorter. So ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous and subscribe for more fixed gear videos just like this one every Thursday and Saturday at 6 p.m. Pacific. First, let's talk about the specs of the Cabaneros. The frame set is 4130 Cromoli, which is on par for what you should be getting for 340 US dollars. But the frame set does come with chain tensioners, which are really nice for beginners to really dial in the chain tension. The wheels are 30 millimeter rims, 32 spokes lays to loose ball bearing hubs. 30 millimeter rims is slightly better than the 44 millimeter rims that a lot of the competition offers since 30 millimeters will be pretty much just as durable, lighter, which means that the wheels will be easier to accelerate and easier to get uphill. These Joytech loose ball bearing hubs aren't the highest quality in the world, but they get the job done. It is a little bit disappointing that they are loose ball bearing since they will require regular maintenance and adjustment out of the box. And for the rest of the components, they're pretty much your basic, no frail, but usable components that you'll find on a lot of other bikes at this price. So the Cabaneros Barranquilla weighs in at 21 pounds and 15 ounces for the 56 centimeter version. The specs are all set and good, but Here's how my experience has been riding the Cabaneros Barranquilla. While sprinting and accelerating the bike, overall I'd say that it's pretty balanced. The Cromoli steel frame set gives a nice balance between stiffness and liveliness, but overall it's pretty similar to the competition. The cranks, again, they're pretty in the middle as far as stiffness goes. The platform pedals are sturdy and grippy for mashing, and unlike a lot of other pedals, they don't actually need to be replaced right out of the box. It is a little bit disappointing that they don't come with foot retention for fixed gear riders. There is some pedal strike with the platform pedals if you take corners pretty aggressively, but once I put on my clipless pedals, I did not have any pedal strike issues. As far as comfort goes, fit is the most important aspect. And the Cabaneros line only comes in 54 and 56 centimeters, which is a bit limiting. Fortunately, those sizes accommodate most people. I normally like to ride a 58 centimeter bike, so I had to get a 56 centimeter. And surprisingly, it fit me pretty well. It was just a bit more on the aggressive side. Now, stock saddles are always interesting in that some people like them, some people cannot stand them. With this bike, I actually found the stock saddle tolerable and the longest ride that I did was 45 miles with it and I had no complaints. Your mileage may vary. The Cabaneros line comes stock with 28C Kenda Quest tires and these come on a lot of bikes at this price but they're not bad tires at all. Overall, the Kenda Quest tires are acceptable and they do really smoothen out the ride compared to even 25C tires. For handlebars on the Cabaneros line, you can either get drops, bullhorns, or risers. It's a little bit unfortunate though because the handlebar choice is married to the color choice. And the color choice that I was in, this one comes with drop bars. What I would really like to see with Cabaneros is if they let you choose handlebars and colors, and that would give them something above the competition rather than just being at the standard. The drivetrain was actually smoother than most of the bikes that I've ridden at this price. The chain ring is better than average and it interplays really nicely with the chain and the cog. For the stopping power, the brake pads felt kind of plasticky and you have to squeeze pretty hard to get a sufficient amount of stopping power. They're plenty safe, it's just that the feel for them isn't great. And this is to be expected at this price because some compromises have to be made to keep the price down. Overall, I'd say that the ride quality is balanced and middle of the road and smooth. The 28C tires in combination with a more relaxed geometry on a chromo frame set just makes it a pretty pleasant and smooth riding experience. Now for the versatility of this bike, it's pretty clear cut that you're just going to be doing street riding with it because I wouldn't put anything beyond 28C tires on it. But the bike does excel at just getting you from point A to point B reliably on the street and relatively comfortably. The Cabaneros does not have any bottle bosses, which can be a good thing or a bad thing. It's a good thing if you like the minimal look, but it's a bad thing if you like to take really long rides and have water 
dedicated on your frame set. Just keep it in mind. And also there's no mounts for fenders or racks. Again, there are workarounds to that. My experience with the durability and the reliability of this bike was a little bit interesting. On the first ride that I took with this bike, the nose of the saddle ripped. And so far it's just an aesthetic issue and it doesn't affect how comfortable the saddle is. After about 80 miles on the bike though, the non-drive slide of the bottom bracket started to creak. It's something that I can fix because I have all the tools and the experience necessary, but if a beginner experiences something like that, they're most likely going to have to go through a shop, which could increase the cost of owning this bike. On top of that, the hubs are loose ball bearings, so they will need adjusting and packing out of the box. Also, those loose ball bearing hubs will need regular maintenance, and it'll need more maintenance the more you ride it. Now let's talk about the attention to detail and quality control. One of the most important indicators to look for for quality control is in the welds and how clean they are. And fortunately, the welds are very clean, and in the paint there's only really minor bubbles and imperfections, so the quality seems pretty good. And speaking of that paint, that is something that really sets this bike apart from the competition. The Cabaneros Barranquilla that I have here is this lightish blue color, and it has gold flake, and it changes colors depending on what angle you're looking at and how the light is hitting it. And unfortunately, the camera doesn't do it justice, but just know that this paint really it pops and it's really cool. As far as packing and shipping goes, I had a mostly positive experience. Now the bike had to come over the northern border to me and it looked like the box had been through hell and back. Once I opened up the box, everything was in one piece and neatly packed and nothing was damaged from shipping. But underneath the packaging, there was a deep nick in the paint on the drive side of the down tube, which says to me that it was damaged before they shipped it out to me. So that is a little bit disappointing. So is the company I was worth it? The answer to that question is different depending on whether you're in Canada or in the US. In the US where you have to pay for shipping and you have to get it across the border and where we have lots of good bikes to choose from, I wouldn't really say it's worth it. But in Canada, the story's a little bit different where options are more limited. So let's take a look at those options. In Canada, I still think that older model Fuji feathers or Fuji tracks are a better buy since you can find them at bike shops pretty easily at a steep discount around the price of this Cabaneros. And across the board, the Fujis just have better components. Also in Canada, you can get the State 4130 Core Line or the Pure Cycles Premium. These, of course, are a little bit more expensive since they do have sealed bearing hubs. But with those bikes and in my experience, that's almost almost a moot point because those wheels are pretty sluggish and are just not really nice to ride on. And if you get into riding, you're probably just going to want to upgrade them. So with both bikes, you're probably just going to upgrade the wheels anyway. And at this, I give the win to Cabaneros because it's cheaper up front and it has a really cool frame set. Something else to consider is that in my experience, this bike has needed more work to maintain and to build up than other bikes. With professional assembly for a bike is usually around 60 to 80 US dollars. If you need to do that, you need to consider putting that on top of the price tag. And with any bike, if you don't have experience, I would recommend that you do it. It's just especially important with this bike because the hubs are not adjusted or packed very well out of the box. So what is the main draw to the Cabaneros line? In my eyes, it's mostly that unique frame set. It doesn't sound like much, but it can actually matter a lot because a lot of people just purchase bikes based on looks. And as long as it has the base level of good enough, looks become the next most important thing. I am really in love with this bike's paint. I'm a sucker for sparkly bikes and this bike has glittery paint and it's just awesome. Also the seat stays and below the top tube, which gives it a unique look. The competition, they have pretty pedestrian bikes, but this is something that's actually unique. And if you want to be balling on a budget, this bike can let you do that. It's pretty middle of the road as far as quality goes, but if you don't really want to hunt around for an older model Fuji Feather or Fuji Track, this will get the job done. Of course, it is going to cost a good chunk more if you're not willing to one, learn how to work on it yourself, or to bring it to a bike shop to have them professionally maintain and service it. It's a solid choice for the price. It's not considerably better or considerably worse but the fact that it has a really unique frame set may make it worth your consideration. What are some other good options for entry-level fixed gears in Canada 
let me know in the comments. And Fixie Famous shoutouts to Michael Rector, Joya Rapallo, Alistair McCullough, Matt Ford, Ozzy Verto, Connor Kerrigan, Marek Dravecki, Robert Terpstra, Blue Tick Hound, Evil Erty, Mark Vandeventer, and Jazeel for supporting the channel through Patreon. And if you haven't ridden your bike yet today, stop watching me right now because life is short, but don't make it shorter. So ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous.